when he was working the graveyard shift cleaning airplanes. It was just like a, a metallic silver. It's about 80 to 100 feet long, 70 feet off the ground. So you had these real bright lights coming from within. It was so close that I could have grabbed the rock and I could have hit the darn thing. And all of a sudden, it just accelerated, gone it went. There's cameras everywhere. The FAA has to have pictures. I'm not making it up. <laughs> there has not been one piece of physical evidence that has passed the scientific test. But they still believe. I saw what I saw, period. If you can't control it, kill it, or conceal it, okay, entirely, you have to deny it. In the end, does it really matter whether or not these UFO sightings can be explained away? After all, wouldn't that take away all the mystery, the intrigue, and the fun of it? Mark Saxonmeyer, Fox News, Chicago. I wish that would have happened earlier, actually. Well, that was an interesting piece. He led the piece with this lady obviously looking at Venus, and everybody in this room knew that. I don't know who this person was, never talked to her. Second person he talked to actually saw an advertising banner that's usually seen in the downtown Chicago along the lakefront. It's a very large banner that's either pulled by a helicopter or a plane. It's and big. I went to go get back in bed and and, um, and this he could said, cut. We don't need this. There. We could kill this piece here. Stop the video DVD. Looks like he's getting eaten by something. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. That was actually the, the full interview um, of, uh, by Mark uh, Saxenmeyer from Fox of the uh, witnesses, those two witnesses. But what happened was um, the piece was supposed to play out differently, as I was told. We planned for this three, about uh, three to four weeks in advance. We spent uh, a couple weeks getting everybody lined up, and not all the witnesses showed up for the shoot. The uh, tone of that shoot for Fox was supposed to be very serious. It was not supposed to be uh, like this. The one individual you've seen that uh, um, was talking about the O'Hare incident of, of uh, 2001 in April was very convincing. I met his family. I believe this gentleman to be very um, earnest. And the funny thing is, his last name is Ernst. And uh, a hell of a guy, too. And he knows, he remembers this entire sighting very vividly because, as he says, it was up close and personally could have thrown a rock at it maybe 60 feet away. Away. There were four other people with him, but that wasn't everybody that witnessed it. He, he knew there were other people and other hangers looking at it and just didn't talk to him afterwards. Uh, so sightings around O'Hare are really not something unique or new. Uh, I believe our first sighting in O'Hare was in the 50s, and it was part of Blue Book that at least recorded. Um, the other thing about this sighting at O'Hare, and I'm trying to cover a lot of material, Mind you now, this condensed version is 155 pages long. If you get a chance, please read it. And I'm going to give you the bottom lines and everything. Um, first of all, what we're looking at is something truly, truly unusual, truly anomalous. Secondly, many people seen it, and it was photographed. It was photographed, and some photographs, I believe, that did come forward, at least one of them, may very well be a legitimate photograph, but since we don't have anybody tied to it coming forward, we don't accept that as evidence. As you know, that we at MUFON take a very rigid stance on what is evidence, and same thing at NARCAP. But one individual, one witness that we spoke to, or I spoke to, I think she gave some very good insight, and if you don't mind, listen to some audio uh, from my interview with this person. Uh, I think it's very interesting. Can we start the audio, please? She's confirming the fact that photos were taken. I mean, you knew when you were looking at it, even with the naked eye, that doesn't 
you do, it was something that was kind of oval, disc-shaped, not as hard edge as the stereotypical disc. Um, it seemed to have a clockwise spin rotation. Uh, not clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise, counterclockwise. Um, spin going on. If there was Can we stop for one second? What she's saying is we're looking at an object with softer edges, not quite the same as the hard edge UFO that we're usually depicted in everything, spinning counterclockwise. And the other thing about it she mentions earlier in the interview, it had some unique qualities to it of its, of its reflectivity that made her consider other types of components other than metal, even possibly some type of ceramic, which was very interesting. This lady has a background in um, journalism. She was a reporter. She was a TV anchor person in the uh, Washington area. She has a inter an interest in the military and military uh, uh, aviation. And she has a background in it because she is a military, as we refer to as a military brat. Her father was a uh, retired, or is a retired uh, commander of a Navy air wing and she knows what flies, how it flies, and what should be up there and not be up there, and she's also seen some highly sophisticated stealth technology. She was absolutely certain that what she saw that day was not of this world. Maybe a little bit more of that, foot of, uh, that audio, please. That maybe that's what was causing that fuzzy quality. So the fuzziness would be like a distortion around the edge? There was, well, there was a distortion in the immediate sky area of okay. it, very close up to it, but a visible distortion, uh, which I could see when I looked at it through the reading glasses. Um, when you came upon it um, and you pulled over, any idea, like, from the time you actually saw it, now you've seen the whole event then. Uh, you know, I must have, because really it was probably 13 or 14 minutes altogether. See, now this is a long sighting. This wasn't something... And, and, and at that point, are you moving about where you were able to get different perspectives? Or are um, you stationary? From the road, uh, well, when I first saw it from the road, um, then we did move off um, to get over to the international terminal area and pull over. So I did get to see it basically from two different places, which would have put it up in the area of the runways that are to the farthest south okay. in O'Hare. Um, there's the, the, the longish runways that kind of run from southwest to slightly northeast. Um, and it would put it kind of down in the neighborhood of not quite, uh, not quite the end of that, maybe up the concourse is a little from that. So that area of gate C, uh, concourse C, would yeah. make sense, that does make yeah. sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. That's pretty good right there. We'll stop that. And that's pretty much uh, enough audio right now. People are falling asleep. So what we'll do is I'm going to show you some footage to keep you really awake. How's that? Now we're going to talk about the Tinley Park sightings. Obviously, what came down with the O'Hare sighting is Everything conclusive and definitive so far is at NARCAP, and that's all I can do is direct you because there's so much material there, um, you'd really have to read it. I have the books in front of me, but I cannot see a thing, so I can't read the details. What I'd like to do instead, show you some footage from Tinley Park that I think you'll find rather impressive. Uh, but before we show the Tinley Park footage, I'm going to show you some footage from Arizona uh, and this, I'm going to give you some insight. August, the month of August in 2004 started with a bang. I could tell you that a lot of things happened in 2004. As you can remember, August was the month of those major hurricanes. Do you remember that? Our first of the series of a five category came on shore the 13th of August. Well, on the 19th of August, we had a craft or an object hovering over Minneapolis-St. Paul for six hours in a 30-knot wind. Does everybody remember that one, or did you ever hear about that? 